Measuring an absolute threshold for human light detection is a long-standing question in psychophysics, so it has been tested many times. Among the attempts, a seminal study by Hecht, Schuller, and Piren in 1942 um, retested the question by improving the experimental conditions of past attempts with the stronger statistical analysis. Since its publication, um, this paper is still considered one of the classical experiments setting a very high standard in testing vision. So at first, um, this might seem to be a kind of a very simple experiment, but it becomes quite complicated when you start to think about the number of variables you need to control or take care of to achieve the best measurement. So as this, about, uh, this was about the measuring the absolute threshold of light detection, they considered the following um, to maximize the sensitivity of rod system. We know that the um, eye becomes more and more sensitive if you've been in the dark for some time. For example, if you enter a movie theater on a bright sunny day, you won't be able to see anything for several minutes. With time, however, your eyes become adjusted to the dark and you will be able to see better even though the light level is very low. So our visual system becomes most sensitive to light when the rods have not absorbed any light for about 30 minutes. So under these conditions, we say that the photopigments photo in rods are fully regenerated. So dark adaptation or the ability of the eyes to adjust to the dark is the opposite process of light adaptation, which is known to be completed within five or six minutes, uh, which is about six times faster than the dark adaptation. So um, during the dark adaptation, um, both rods and cones have begun adapting with cones adapting much more rapidly over the first five minutes. So <clears throat> this is actually cone adapting over 10 minutes, but at the same time, the rod is also adapting, right? But then at the uh, very slower rate, but um, at the 10 minute mark, the cone is pretty much saturated, right? So, um, however, the rods continue to become more sensitive at a, a steady rate, but then the cones, however, um, have uh, leveled off and are now as adapted as they can be. Now, the rod and cone sensitivity levels have crossed at um, a point called the rod cone break. So um, about 15 minutes mark, uh, the cones no longer adapting at all, and the dark adaptation now is occurring via the rods at steady rate. And then after 20 minutes, the rods are still adapting, but they will level off after say 30 minutes and become fully dark adapted um, after 30 minutes. And another consideration um, to measure the absolute threshold, threshold of the light detection was on which part of the retina the light spot should be placed. So as you can see from the graph, sensitivity of the eye in the dark varies with the retinal location. Since we're measuring light sensitivity in the dark, we need to find the retinal location where raw cell concentration is at max. So this figure um, shows raw density across a horizontal cross section of the retina. As we can see, fovea is not an ideal location for this experiment because this is the, um, um, the point where you can find almost no rod because this is a densely packed with cones. And so as you can see, uh, it is either um, 20 degrees to the nasal or temporal um, to the fovea. So that's where you can find the, um, 
the highest concentration of the rods. And now the color of the light. Um, so this graph shows the relative sensitivity of human to the uh, color of light under dark adapted condition. Well, the, the you know this curve uh, represents <coughs> the relative sensitivity under scotopic uh, condition, whereas this curve represents the relative sensitivity um, under photopic condition. So we are most sensitive to green color when there is uh, enough light in the background, but um, under the scotopic condition, um, we are most sensitive to blue greenish color uh, or cyan color. So this the, the peak sensitivity is around 505 nanometer, which looks blue green. <coughs> Um, in their experiment, they used a, a light of one millisecond duration within which light intensity and flash duration have reciprocal relationship according to the Bloch's law. So the relationship between the time and light intensity is expressed in this graph. Um, so basically the Bloch's law states that so within the critical duration, the total number of photons, the quanta, the light energy needed to reach threshold, remains the same, which is this flat line running until this critical duration. Um, so within this critical duration, intensity and duration have actually a reciprocal relationship they are inversely proportional so for example so when luminance is halved within this region a doubling in stimulus stimulus duration will be required to reach threshold on the other hand when luminance is doubled then the threshold can be reached in half the duration and beyond critical duration threshold is only dependent upon the luminance rather than the product of luminance and duration. Um, so this relationship is um, shown on the graph. So the critical duration for scotopic vision is 100 millisecond. And there's another law uh, relating uh, the spatial summation that is relating the spatial summation to uh, the size of the stimulus called the recall's uh, law of summation. So this law states that the uh, total number of photons required for the detection in scotopic condition is constant up to a critical diameter, which is 10 arc minutes. So this is actually um, kind of a, a sister law to the Bloch's law, so um, the area of the stimulus and the intensity is actually have um, they they have a reciprocal relationship. So based on this uh, recall's law, uh, they use the light spot with a ten arcmin diameter, um, which is the maximum extent of summation of light for scotopic vision um, so that light will be detected as long as the threshold number of photons fall anywhere within this extent. So um, this was a kind of a final experimental setup after they consider uh, pretty much all the variables to take care of. So first, they dark adapted the observer for 40 minutes to ensure the maximum rod sensitivity. And then um, they locate the test spot um, here, a test spot um, 20 degree nasal to the fixation, to the fixation so that um, the spot can be projected on the temporal side of the retinal location 
and where uh, there's the highest rod concentration. They also used blue-green test spot for maximum sensitivity according to the, um, the relative sensitivity of um, uh, wavelength, right? And then they used the um, 10 arc mean diameter light spot and present this light spot for one millisecond. I believe that is kind of a fastest um, presentation they can reliably generate and still within the uh, critical duration, right? And they also used the artificial pupil. They placed the artificial pupil to control the light influx. So now they measured um, the absolute threshold light, absolute threshold of light detection using the method of constant stimuli. So this is uh, one of the uh, classical um, psychophysical method to measure threshold that we did not talk about in more detail when we talk about other classical um, psychophysical methods such as method of limits and method of adjustment. So um, they chose this method to span a psychometric function. So the, the one of, good thing about the method of constant stimuli is that you can actually span a psychometric function. Um, so in this method, you first select a range of stimulus intensities from uh, clearly invisible to certainly visible. So we have this a spectrum of light uh, from the weakest to the um, brightest, right? So from left to right, the light intensity increases. So from this um, you know, spectrum of light, um, you will pick a few intensities, usually ranging from four to nine in a kind of uniform step around the um, suspected threshold. And for their experiment, um, they picked out you know, six um, different light intensities. And these hand-picked intensities will make up uh, your constant stimuli set so hence the name to be tested. Now you put these intensities to a test by presenting each intensity um, one at a trial and asking the observer if she or he sees the stimulus or not. So you test each intensity in random order. So um, many times between like 2200 trials uh, per stimulus intensity and after um, the data collection is over then you aggregate the frequency of sin responses for each intensity uh, and you uh, calculate the proportion of a seeing out of total number of presentation and then finally you plot the percentages seen against the stimulus intensity which will constitute a curve called psychometric function and from this psychometric function, you can um, calculate the threshold at any uh, performance level. And um, in the, um, their, exa uh, their experiment, they actually used the 60% um, level of seeing um, as, a, a, as their uh, threshold criterion. So this is kind of a hypothetical um, experiment where um, the, uh, the percentage seen on the y-axis is plotted against the stimulus intensity uh, with the arbitrary unit. So you just measure. So this is after all the data collection is done. So um, at the, the first stimulus intensity, the subject didn't see much. And then, as the stimulus intensity increases, we can see that um, the percentage seen is increasing up to 100%. Right? So if we connect these dots, then this will constitute a psychometric function. And the threshold is defined here as the 60% seen stimulus intensity level. Right? So this will be um, 
the stimulus intent. Uh, this is a threshold. So this is an absolute threshold of light detection, basically. So each dot represents uh, 50 trials, right? Because we have uh, six different intensities, in this case, total of 300 trial is run. And so this is just the stimulus intensity um, in arbitrary unit. And at the stimulus intensity one, um, this, the, the observer says uh, only, um, says that you know, they, he, he or she saw uh, the stimulus presented just once. And then as we increase the stimulus intensity, the absolute frequency of seeing increases to 100%. And this is a relative frequency, basically, right? So you divide each absolute frequency by 50, right? So 50 is the total number of trials uh, per stimulus intensity. So you divide this absolute frequency by 50 to get these percentages. So after optimizing all the conditions, um, they were able to determine how many photons needed to enter the eye for a person to barely see the light under uh, the best condition. So um, this is uh, their result, um, the frequency of seeing curve. And that's what they uh, called, but you know this is basically the psychometric function. And I think the smooth curve is a modeled psychometric function with a Poisson distribution. And each dot represents 50 trials. And I'm not really sure what N means here. And I have to go back to the paper, but I guess this is a session number. So this is how many sessions they run. So for example, and for this, uh, in fact, these initials are actually the initials of the three authors. Um, so it is kind of a common that um, the authors of a psychophysical a paper of the psychophysics um, is often the participants of the experiment. And so because this uh, each dot represents 50 trials, so a session is um, 300. And then if hacked run six sessions, then the total number of trials he ran is 1,800 trials. Right, so um, the um, the frequency of seeing, the, uh, the flash seen is actually um, plotted against the log of the average number of photons per flash. So this is the power of 10. So, you know, the two... 2.0 is about 100, right? That was exactly 100 point, right? 10 to 2 is 100. So they define this threshold, right? These are the threshold um, where they see this flash 60% of the time. Right? So as you can see, it is around 100 photons. So um, uh, according to the paper, um, they said under the best condition, a person can see the uh, light with just uh, 54 to 148 photons um, that enter the eye. So then for this many photons entering the eye to be visible, then what is the minimum amount of light or amount of photons that a single rod can detect? So uh, of those 54 to 400 148 photon incident, they estimated the loss before retina. And then their estimation was about 50% will be uh, lost, uh, would be lost to the absorption by optical media, uh, photopigment, and or reflection of the cornea. So um, they also estimated the loss at retina. So they estimated that another 40% will fail to activate the rod um, when photons fall between the rods. So, you know, this is an electron um, microscopic photo of a rod 
mosaic with a small Y circle so that that represents a, a single rod whereas the large circles this black outline is the diameter of uh, uh, where the recall summation occurs so this is about you know 10 arc mean so they estimated that you know 40 percent will fail to activate a rod when they fall like between the rods like this right so this is incomplete activation something like that so so 40% uh, will be lost um, in the end. So finally, the only about you know 10%, five to you know 14 photons will be absorbed by retina within the 10 arc mean area, uh, where about 300 to 500 rods uh, will be found. So these black dots represents the rods that is bleached by photons, right? Um, so for about 100 photons hitting the cornea, uh, the observer will report seeing a flash 60% of the time when about 10 photons are absorbed by the rods. So given this, it is highly unlikely that two photons hit the same rod when 10 photons fall randomly where there are 300-500 rods. So Given that the chance that a single rod will be absorbed more than a single photon is very small, so given this a very small chance that um, a photon, a, a two individual photon hit a single rod, the authors concluded that each photon will land on a single rod to activate, and these activations will be summated within um, this summation area. So what that means is that um, a single photon should be enough to activate a single rod. This was a really amazing conclusion from the study because this is a you know far more sensitive than any man-made light sensor at the time. Um, I don't know uh, what it is these days, but you know uh, human retina is uh, amazing. A machine to detect the light and it is super super sensitive uh, in detecting the light and that was the conclusion of their study